Hi, I'm Ken Hadrick, Dean of the Pie Academy, where we teach you everything you need to know about baking homemade pies. Thanks for stopping by. So after last week's video on making the perfect graham cracker crust, I had a few folks who wrote and said essentially, uh, thanks for the great video, but I could really use a recipe for a no roll press in pastry crust. Well, I have to tell you, I saw that one coming a mile away. After all, there are only so many uses for a graham cracker crust. When we bake fruit pies, nut pies, chess pies, custard pies, and so many others, we usually need a pastry crust, not a graham cracker crust. So to the 12 million of you who emailed over the years to say you can't roll a pie dough to save your life, stick around for a few minutes and I'll show you just how easy it is to make a no roll crust. In fact, if you watch all the way to the end of the video, I'll even show you how you can use the same single dough recipe to make both the bottom crust and the crumb topping for your fruit pie. You won't want to miss that little neat trick. So we're going to make our dough in the food processor because that's how we get the fine packable crumbs that we need. We'll use one and three quarter cups all-purpose flour, preferably cold. Uh, two tablespoons sugar and a one-half teaspoon salt. Give it a couple of quick buzz buzzes to mix it all up. Remove the lid and add 11 tablespoons cold unsalted butter cut into half-inch cubes. Replace the lid and give the machine about seven one-second pulses, enough to break the butter into small split piece sized pieces. Now, remove the lid and sprinkle two and a half tablespoons cold water evenly over the mixture. Put the lid back on and then continue to pulse the machine as many times as necessary until the mixture has the consistency of damp sand. It's sort of like damp sand, but just keep your little toes out of it. To check for the right consistency, carefully reach in and press some of it between your fingers. You should be able to do this with it. If it still seems a little dry, continue to pulse the machine instead of adding more water to get that dampish, sandy feel. Now there's a lot of dough here, enough for a large deep dish apple or other fruit pie. And because the mixture is so loose and separate, it's going to look like a lot when you dump the mixture into your deep dish pan. But don't worry. The pan we're using is a generous nine and a half inches in diameter and one and three quarter inches deep. It's a classic deep dish pan. We'll transfer the mixture to the pan and just like we did with the graham cracker crust, spread it around evenly and make a thick berm around the sides. Press the mixture lightly at first and when you're sure everything is evenly distributed, start pressing it more firmly. Finally, like we did with the graham cracker crust, drape a piece of plastic wrap in the shell and give it a final firm pressing all around. And be sure to square off that bottom crease as best you can where the uh, pan folds so you don't end up with too much excess dough in there. And before you know it, you'll end up with a nice looking pastry shell just like this one. Refrigerate the shell for at least an hour before using it. You can use the refrigerated shell for any deep dish fruit pie with a crumb topping, or you can partially pre-bake it with the beans in the foil like you typically would if you're making a nut pie or a custard pie, a pumpkin pie, or a chess pie. Now, I promised that I'd show you how to use this recipe to make both the shell and the crumb topping for your fruit pies, so here's how you do it. Instead of using a deep dish pie pan, use a standard one, one with sides that are no more than about one and a quarter inches high like this Pyrex pan. Before you press the dough into the pan, first spoon out one to one and a quarter cups of the mixture and transfer it to a mixing bowl. Add three tablespoons of sugar and one quarter teaspoon cinnamon if you like. Mix by hand and then refrigerate. This is your topping. Now press the remaining dough mixture into the pan, the smaller pan that we're using, then refrigerate the shell. After an hour, fill your shell. Uh, here's a fresh apple and pear pie with about five and a half cups of fruit in it. And then press the topping over the apples. Bake your pie at 375 degrees for 50 to 60 minutes. Now before you go, let's take a look at our crust here and see what you think. Uh, it sure looks good to me. We'll cut a big slice, 
and take a little peek and beautiful. Nobody is ever going to know that this was a press in crust unless you tell them and why would you want to do that? So I hope this helps. Let me know. And as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our new videos. And if you're not already a member, I hope you'll sign up over at thepieacademy.com. We'd love to see you there. Take care.